This is the second lesson on double entry concept. In this lesson, I'm going to illustrate the concept using a worked out example. It is important that you understand the, the concept that I explained in the first lesson so that you are able to really follow as well as we move from uh, the introduction that I did in lesson one to this particular lesson two. In the lesson two, therefore, we are going to look at uh, the attached example that we are going to use to illustrate the, those particular concepts which are very simple concepts in lesson one you may have you need to review them but once you you have some background about double entry then you're okay and you can be able to answer uh, follow answer this question as you follow us in this particular lesson too the example reads as follows the following transactions have been extracted from the books of a sole trader in the month of June 2022. On first, started a business with 6,000 in the bank and 5,000 in cash. Bought machinery. On second, bought goods on credit from Dungu, 2,700. On third, bought goods on credit from Esmuigai, 750. On fifth, bought goods for cash, 540. On sixth, Return goods to Ndungu, 120. On 8th, bought goods on credit from Esmuigai, 570. On 10th, sold goods on credit to K Mwaniki, 1,170. On 12th, sold goods for cash, 630. On 18th, took 600, took, on 18th, took 900 of cash and paid into the bank. On 21st, bought machinery by check. 1,650. On 22nd, sold goods on credit to MOTNO, 660. On 23rd, came when Nikki returned goods to the business, 420. On 25th, MOTNO returned goods to the business, 30. On 28th, returned goods to Esmuigai, 90. 29th, the business paid Ndungu by check, 2,580. On 30th, bought machinery on credit from Kinudia 810. We are required to enter the transactions in relevant ledger accounts and extract a trial balance for the month ended 30th June 2022. To answer this question, therefore, we start by preparing the relevant ledger accounts which can record these particular transactions for the business in the month of June. Beginning with the first transaction on 1st of June, we told that uh, the sole trader started a business with 6,000 in the bank and 5,000 in cash. The amount with which the sole trader started the business is known as capital. Therefore, this transaction will be entered in capital account and the double entry entered in bank account 6,000 and cash account 5,000. Well, let's begin by preparing the capital account. The first account is known as capital account. In capital account, we're going to record both capital in cash and capital in the bank. And remember, as we say in the rules of double entry, when capital increases, we are supposed to credit. But that capital, as it increases, assets are also increases. One asset is cash and another asset is bank. So let us prepare an account for bank here. So that is his bank account. Another account is for cash. So we prepare a cash account. Cash account. We record the first transaction, which is capital. We record it in the capital account on the credit side. That is on June 1st. 1st June 2022. 
where we have bank and the amount in the bank equals to 6,000 and also cash and the amount in the cash account is 5,000. Right, and the double entry for that should be entered in the bank account and cash account on the debit side. Capital has been credited because according to rule number two of double entry, when capital increases, we are supposed to credit capital account and when it decreases, we debit the capital account. Bank, which is an asset, when bank of the business increases or when the balance in the bank of the business increases, we are supposed to debit. So we will debit bank account and also debit cash account. On 1st of June, 2022, we write capital and enter 6,000. In the cash account on 1st of June, 2022, also we write capital account and enter 5,000 into 5,000. The next transaction is on second. And on second, we're told, bought goods on credit from Dung. This is purchases. This transaction will affect purchases account. But then another account affected is an account known as Dung, who is a creditor, because we are buying from Dung on credit. We are purchasing goods from Dung on credit. So we will record an account known as Dung account, in an account known as purchases account. So prepare purchases account. And account for creditor known as Ndungu. This is a purchases account. And for the creditor Ndungu, prepare an account here known as Ndungu account. Right, to record that transaction, therefore, in these two accounts, uh, purchases is an expense. And to increase expenses, we're supposed to debit. Ndungu is a creditor, a liability, because we're buying from Ndungu on credit. Where well, to increase liabilities, we are supposed to credit. Now we're going to record in the purchases account on 2nd of June, 2022, and write the name Ndungu, because Ndungu is the creditor we are buying from credit. The amount is 2,700. The double entry in the account of Ndungu on 2nd of June, we write purchases. The amount is 2,700, 2,700. That is on 2nd. Let us go to 3rd. On third, bought goods on credit from Esmuigai. That is another purchases. And another purchases on credit. So it gives rise to another creditor as well as um, another entry in the purchases account. So we need to prepare an account for another creditor known as Esmuigai. So we record Esmuigai account. Account known as Esmuigai account. Now what we need to do is to record in the purchases account because this is another purchases. So um, another purchases on credit. So we say on 3rd of June, 2022, we like Esmuigai. and record the same, um, uh, the amount of 750. The double entry to that will be entered in the account of Esmuigai on third. We record purchases. The amount is 750. That is on, on, on third. On fifth, bought goods for cash 540 
this is another purchases, but these purchases now is going to be for cash. Since we, we already have the cash account already prepared, we'll not prepare another cash account. We shall just record in purchases and then in cash account, which is already existing. We're therefore going to have on 5th June, 2022, we record cash. Purchases for cash, which is 540. And then in cash account, when we are buying goods for cash, the amount of cash in the business um, is decreasing. And cash is an asset. To decrease an asset, we are supposed to credit. Therefore, we are going to record on the credit side of cash account because cash is an asset. When we use cash to purchase goods, cash is decreasing. When the assets are decreasing, we are supposed to credit the assets account. Therefore, we credit the account of cash with 540. The next transaction is on June 6th. Return goods to Ndungu. When we return goods to Ndungu, and the, uh, the amount for the goods is 120, when we return goods to Ndungu, this is known as return outwards. Return outwards are those goods which were purchased, but then return to the creditor. So we bought goods from Ndungu, but now we are returning some to Ndungu. When we return goods to Ndungu, then we are reducing the amount of obligation that the business owes Ndungu. Therefore, to reduce liability, because Ndungu is a liability, a creditor, to reduce liabilities, we are supposed to credit debit the liabilities account. So we are going to debit the account of Ndungu, which is a liability, but then prepare a different account known as return outwards. And in account of return outwards, we shall um, credit. Right, let us prepare that account of return outwards here. So we have return outwards. Start with the account of Ndungu, which we debit with amount of 120. That is on 6th. On 6th, June 2022, we record return outwards. Return outwards is also known as purchases return. So that is return outwards. The amount is 120. In the account of return outwards, we record on the credit side. And we call this transaction Ndungu. Record 120. Record 120. The next transaction is uh, on A. Bought goods on credit from Esmuigai. This is another credit purchases. And we are purchasing from Esmuigai. Since we already have all these accounts, we have the account of Esmu guy and we have the account of purchases, we just enter into those accounts. Goods bought on credit from Esmu guy are 570. So we have on 8th June 2022, we have Esmu guy. Esmu guy. 570. And in the account of Esmu guy, we credit. To increase the liability, we credit that account to increase the liability and we record purchases. This is another purchases. The amount is 570. 570 is the amount. 570. On 10th, sold goods on credit to K Maniki. This is credit sales. And when we have sales, we are supposed to prepare a sales account. We don't still don't have that account. So we have to prepare it. We are preparing an account of sales and another account for K Maniki because we are selling goods on credit to K Maniki. Therefore, K Maniki becomes a creditor, the person who uh, purchases goods from us on credit. 
or from the business on credit. We are therefore going to prepare that account and being a data, K Maniki is an asset. K Maniki is an asset. So we have an account for sales. And another account for K Moniki. Right. So uh, the business is all goes to K Moniki for on credit. The amount is one thousand one hundred and seventy. Sales is revenue or income. To increase income, according to the rules of double entry, we are supposed to credit in the account of that income. So in the account of sales, we're going to credit on 10 June 2022, we credit with K Moniki, 1,170 and Debit the account of Kay Mwaniki on 10th, uh, 10th June with sales. And the sales amount is 1,170. Kay is a data. And when data has increased being assets, we are supposed to debit. On 12th, sold goods for cash. Sales account and cash account. To increase sales, we are supposed to debit in the sales account. Therefore, we will debit in the sales account on 12th June. And we debit with cash because we are selling goods for cash. 630. The double entry is made in the cash account. When we sell goods for cash, cash is increasing. Cash is an asset. And to increase assets, we are supposed to debit. Therefore, we are going to debit the account of cash on 12th. with sales. The sales amount um, equals to, the sales amount is equal to 630. Now we record 630 in cash account. The next transaction is a transaction on 18th. We all took 900 of cash and paid into the bank. This is a deposit into the bank. Cash in hand is deposited into the bank. This transaction affects uh, cash account and bank account. Therefore, what will happen is that uh, uh, one asset which is known as bank is increasing while another asset known as cash is decreasing. So cash in hand is being deposited into the bank. Therefore, cash is decreasing. To decrease an asset known as cash, we are supposed to credit on 18 June 2022. Credit cash with bank, the amount being 900. Then bank is increasing. Bank is another asset. To increase assets, we are supposed to um, debit. So in the bank account, we're going to have a debit on 18 um, and the debit equals to 900. The debit is for cash, 900. The next transaction is on 21st. Bought machinery by check, 1,150. 1,150. Right, so we prepare that account for machinery. Machinery account. 
The amount for the machinery is 1,650. So we have, uh, when you buy machinery, machinery is an asset and therefore machinery is increasing. To increase asset, which is machinery, we are supposed to debit. So on the debit side, on um, 21st, June 2022, we have bank because we buy the machinery by check to so write bank. The amount is 1,650. And in the account of bank, because we buy machinery by check, that means directly to the bank. And as we buy machinery using the money in the bank, the money in the bank is decreasing. And if the money in the bank is decreasing, then bank account need to be credited. So credit the bank account with that amount. In the bank account here, therefore, we're going to have on 21st, June, 2022, and we have machinery. The amount is 1,650, 1,650. On 22nd, sold goods on credit to MOTNO, 660. This is credit sales. When you sell goods on credit, then we have a data. We have a data, and the data is an asset. The data is increasing, so account of MOTNO will be debited because it is um, an increase in an asset, so we debit. But the account of uh, sales is supposed to be credited. So we're going to have another account here known as MOTNO. MOTNO account, which should be debited being an asset data. Now debit the account of MOTNO on 22nd. with sales, the sales amount is 660. Then in the account of sales, we are going to credit. We should credit in the account of sales. The sales account we're going to record on 22nd, June, M or TN and the amount is 660. The next transaction is on 23rd, came when it returned goods to the business and the amount of goods returned to the business are 420. Therefore, in the account of came when um, goods are returned. When Kane Wanik is returning goods to the business, uh, the amount of, that is uh, owed by Kane Wanik will reduce. That is reducing an asset. So to reduce an asset, we are supposed to credit. The double entry should be done in an account known as return inwards. When a customer returns goods to the business, that is known as return inwards. So we need to prepare an account for return inwards. Return inwards account. And in the return inwards account, um, came when he returned goods. So start with the account of Kemwaniki, which we credit because it is that an asset which is decreasing on 23rd. Return inwards. The amount of return inwards is 420. In the account of Kemwaniki, we credit. And in the account of return inwards, we debit on 23rd. June 2022, debit with Kaye Moniki. The amount is 420, 420. 
The next transaction is a transaction on 25th. which says that uh, MOTN return goods to the business were 30 shillings. This is another return inwards. Therefore, as we return goods inward, the account of MOTN, which is an account of a data, which is an asset, will reduce. And to reduce data, we are supposed to credit. Now we credit the account of MOTN on 25th, by return inwards. The amount is 30. And in the account of return inwards, we are supposed to enter that amount on 25th. We record MOTN, which is the corresponding entry account. The amount is 30 shillings. The next transaction is on 28th. Return goes to Esmuigai 90. Esmuigai is a creditor. And when return goes to Esmuigai, that is a return outwards. Therefore, in the account of Esmuigai, as they are, we return goes to Esmuigai, Esmuigai is a creditor, which is a liability. And when return goes to Esmuigai, then the amount which we owe to Esmuigai will decrease. That is to decrease liability. To decrease liability, we are supposed to debit. Therefore, in the debit side of the account of Esmugai, we record on 28. Return outwards. Return outwards of 90. Then we go to return outwards account. The return outwards account, we record on the um, credit side for the double entry. So on 28th, 2022, we have SMUI guy, 90, 90. On June 29, the business paid Ndungu by check 2580. When we make payments to Dumu by check, we are drawing the check from the bank. And therefore, that means the amount in the bank is decreasing. Bank is an asset, and when the assets are decreasing, we are supposed to credit. Therefore, credit in the bank account. Credit in the bank account. That is on 29th. On 29th, we record Ndungu. The amount is 2,580. The account of Ndungu, Ndungu is um, a liability. Ndungu is a creditor. And when Ndungu is being paid, the amount which is owed to Ndungu is decreasing. And to decrease liability, we are supposed to credit debit or in the account of liability. Now, in the account of Ndungu, we are going to debit on 29th with bank for the amount which has been paid to Ndungu, 2580 2580 The last transaction saying that bought machinery on credit from Kinodia. That means we are going to prepare an account for Kinodia. And uh, that account is for machinery. So Kinodia here is another creditor. Because we have bought machinery from Kinodia on credit. So this account is an account of a creditor. That means we need to um, uh, record this transaction by entering a debit in the machinery account because machinery is increasing. So we're going to enter here on 30th. We have machinery, uh, we have Kinodia. In the account of machinery, we have Kinodia. The amount is 810. 
And in the account of Kinodia, Kinodia being a creditor, and we are buying goods from, from Kinodia on credit, that means the balance, the amount which is owed to Kinodia is increasing. And to increase liabilities, we are supposed to credit, therefore credit the account of Kinodia. The account of Kinodia is credited by 810. The account of Kinodia is credited on uh, 30th by 810. So we have on 30th June, we record machinery, because it is machinery that has been bought from Kinodia on credit. Therefore, we have 810 in that account. Right. So at this point, we have recorded all, we made all the entries. And the next transact, the next question requires that we balance off the ledger account and prepare the trial balance. For us to prepare the trial balance, then we need to learn about balancing off ledger accounts. Balancing off ledger account. Once ledger accounts have been prepared, they need to be balanced off, especially at the end of the period. When the period is ending, we need to balance off all the ledger accounts, transfer them to the trial balance, transfer the balances to the trial balance. I would therefore like to explain how balancing off is done. In balancing off of ledger accounts, accounts are divided into two major categories. The first category of accounts are those accounts which include accounts for assets, accounts for liabilities, and accounts for capital. These are the accounts that majorly are found in the balance sheet or in the statement of financial position. They are the balance sheet accounts or they are those accounts which are found in the statement of financial position. Let me just use the balance sheet because that is a shorter one. But currently it is known as statement of financial position. Right. Um, these accounts are accounts that at the end of the period, they are closed. And then when we start a new period, we open them again and we continue with the, with the same, same account. Therefore, to balance off these accounts, a balance, balance, carried down, balance carried down, and this balance carried down is abbreviated as BAL CD. This BAL CD or balance carried down is introduced, is introduced on the side, on the side of the ledger account, on the side of the ledger account with uh, the lower total on the side with a lower total. That is to mean that in the ledger accounts, you need to determine the total for the debit side and the total for the credit side. Once you get that, then you don't write them first in the ledger accounts. You can may, may just note them somewhere separately, but then determine the difference between the two of them, the, the balance, the total on the credit side and the total on the debit side. Once you get that difference, which is the difference between the debit side and the difference uh, between the debit side and the credit side, then you enter that difference on the side with the lower total and you call it balance carried down, abbreviated as BAL CD. Therefore, that means that uh, uh, BAL CD, balance carried down, is the difference between the two sides. Is a different uh, between the two sides. It is a difference between the two sides. So determine the difference between the two sides, then call it the balance carried down. Enter it on the side with a lower total. After this balance, then you enter the total. 
after this balance, after you enter the balance carried down, then enter the totals below it. And once the totals have been entered, after the total on the opposite side, you need to enter a balance brought down. Right, after the totals, I, I need to note something here, that the balance carried down is entered before the total. The balance carried down is entered before the totals. Before the totals. Then after the totals, on the opposite side, after the totals on the opposite side of bal CD or bal balance carried down, we need to enter, enter balance brought down and enter balance brought down. This balance brought down is abbreviated as bal BD. Ban BD, that is balance carried, brought down. Balance brought down is brought from the previous period. So as we close the previous period on the last date of the previous period, we put the totals, we enter the totals, then we enter a balance brought down on the opposite side of the balance carried down after the totals. And the date for this balance carried down is first date of the next period, is the first date of the next period or first day of the next period. That therefore means if we are ending this period in June and on 30th June, the next day or the, the first day of the next period is first of July. That is just an example. First of July 2022. Now that is the the net the first date of um, the next period that is starting after June is ending. That is assuming the accounting period was ending 30th June and a new accounting period is starting 1st of um, July. This is the first ca category of accounts that you need to balance off and that is how they are balanced off. This is the first category. The second category of accounts These are accounts of incomes, expenses, return inwards, return outwards. In other words, these are the accounts which are uh, used to determine, used to determine the profit for the period, determine the profit for the period. And this profit is determined in the statement of um, profit or loss. In the statement of profit or loss, otherwise known as the income statement. So in the statement of profit or loss, the balance or the totals or the, the, the balances for these accounts are supposed to be transferred. The statement of profit or loss and they are used to determine the profit for the period. I find that these accounts are supposed to be closed at the end of the period and then a new one, totally different new one is opened when a new period starts because the expenses for this period, the income for this period should not be transferred to the next period. Once they are used to determine the profit for this period, then they are closed down and a totally different account is open when the new period starts without any beginning balance. That therefore means um, these accounts, um, the difference, the difference between the debit side and credit side need to be transferred to the statement of profit or loss. The difference of debits and credits is transferred to the statement of profit or loss 
the statement of profit or loss. And that is where it is supposed to be used to determine the profit for the period. So this is the second category of account, the account which um, um, accounts for incomes, accounts for expenses, accounts for return inwards, accounts for return outwards. This type of accounts therefore do not have the balance carried down and the balance brought down because there's nothing that we are taking the next period. There's nothing we are bringing down at the beginning of the next period. To illustrate this, then let us go back and balance off the, our account. Let us balance off our account. Beginning with the account of capital, which is the first one. In capital account, capital is one of those accounts which is transferred to the next period. Therefore, we enter balance carried down, balance put down, and it is entered on the, uh, the side of the lower total. So on the credit side, we have 11,000. On the debit side, we have zero. Therefore, on 30th, 30th June 2022, balance carried down in this account is supposed to be 11,000. And after that, we enter the total of 11,000 on this side and 11,000 on the other side. After that means we have closed the account. Now, after closing the account on the opposite side, we enter 1st July 2022. We have a balance brought down from the previous period. We bring down from June, we bring down 11,000 to July. Let us go to bank account. Bank account is an asset account, which is also balanced off with a balance carried down and balance brought down. Now, on the debit side, we have a total of 6,900. And on the credit side, we have a total of 4,230. Therefore, the difference between the two sides is 2,670. The difference between the two sides is 2,670, which is entered on the side, the lower total, which is the credit side. So on the credit side on 30th June, balance carried down is 2,670, 2,670. Now then we enter the total. After that, we enter the total of both sides, which is now 6,900 and there is 6,900 on this side. After that, after that total, we need to enter the beginning of July where we have 1st July, 2022, balance brought down to begin July with is the same as the balance carried down at the end of June. So 2,617. What I didn't explain is that the balance carried down is the same as the balance brought down. Whatever we bring down in July is whatever we carried down in June. So balance brought down is the same as balance carried down. The next asset is the asset, uh, uh, the next account is the account of cash. Cash is also asset, and therefore we balance it off by having a balance carried down and balance brought down. The total on um, the credit side is a total of 1,440. And on the debit side, we have uh, 5,630. Therefore, the difference between the two sides is 4,190, which is on, which should be entered on the credit side because the credit side has the lower total. So on 30th June, 2022, balance carried down equals to 4,190. 
then enter the total, which is equal to 5,630, 5,630. After the totals, we need to enter on the opposite side, that is on 1st July, on the opposite side on 1st July, 2022, we enter balance carried down, balance brought down. We enter balance brought down, which is the same as balance carried down, 4,190. The next account is the account of purchases. Purchases is an expense, and therefore it is one of the accounts which is used to determine the profit for the period. Therefore, we don't have balance carried down, balance put down, but then the amount will be transferred to the statement of profit or loss. Purchases account has a total of 4,560 on the debit side and zero on the credit side. Therefore, we enter on the credit side on 30th June 2022, enter statement of profit or loss. The amount is 4,560. Now we enter the totals, 4,560. Once we enter the total, so that is the end of it. So we don't have anything after the total, 4,560. The next account is the account of Ndungu. And the account of Ndungu is an account of a creditor. Therefore, that is um, an account for liability. But the account of Ndungu is self-balancing because if we add the totals on the debit side and the totals on the credit side, they are equal to 2,700. In that case, we don't have any balance carried down or balance brought down. We just enter the totals and that will be the balancing of that account. That is how to balance that account. The next account is for Esmuigai. This is another creditor's account, which is a liability. Therefore, need to have a balance carried down and balance brought down. On the credit side, the account has a total of 1,320 on the credit side. But on the debit side, the account has 90. The difference between the two sides is therefore equal to uh, 1,230. Now we're going to enter on 30th June on the debit side, which is the lower total balance carried down of 1,230. But the total for the account is a total of 1,320, 1,320. Then we enter the balance brought down, which is on the opposite side of 1st June, the 1st July, 2022. Balance brought down of uh, 1,230 the amount which is equal to the balance carried down, equal to the balance carried down. The next account is for return outwards. And this is one of the accounts that is used to determine the profit for the period. Therefore, in this case, there will be no balance carried down, balance brought down, but simply um, the total being transferred to the statement of profit or loss. And being that the credit side is greater, enter that on the debit side on 30th June, 2022. Enter statement of profit or loss and 210 is transferred to the statement of profit or loss so that we have the total to be 210, 210. The next account is for sales. Sales is an income account which is used to determine profit for the period. So there will be no uh, balance carried down, balance brought down. Instead, the total for or the, the difference between the two sides of the account will be transferred to the statement of profit or loss and be used there to determine 
the profits for the period. On 30th June, therefore, we enter on the debit side, um, statement of profit or loss. The amount is of the different is equals to 2,460. And then we enter the total of 2,460 as the total for both sides. The next account is the account for KM Waniki, and this is an account for the data, for data. Now, what we're going to, uh, we're going to enter here um, a balance carried down and balance put down. The debit side is greater with a total of 1,170, and credit side is 420. The difference between the two sides is 750, should be entered on the uh, credit side as balance carried down, that is 750. The total is then entered here as 1170 and this side also 1170. After the balance carried down, let us enter the balance brought down on 1st July, 2022. We have a balance brought down. The balance brought down is 750, the same amount as the balance carried down. The next account is for return inwards. And in the account of return inwards, we need to transfer the difference to the statement of profit or loss because this is one of the accounts which is used to determine the profit for the period. On 30th June, therefore, we enter balance cut it down on the credit side to be 450 then just enter the total for the period to be 450 450 right the other account uh, the account of machinery which is another asset account and should be balanced off by entering balance carried down and balance brought down. Therefore, um, on the debit side, we have a total of 2,460 and on credit side zero. Therefore, we enter on the credit side on 30th June, a balance carried down of 2,460 and the totals as 2,460 and 2,460. After that, enter um, a balance um, brought down on the opposite side, that is on 1st July 2022, balance brought down. And this balance brought down will be a total of um, 2,460, just as whatever we found on the other side. The next account is for MOTNO, account for a data, which should also have a balance brought down, balance carried down. Therefore, the difference between the two sides is 630, which is a deficit on the credit side. Therefore, we enter 30th July, 2022. Enter balance carried down of 630 so that the total will be 660. Enter um, on 30th June. Enter on 1st July. 1st July. 2022, on 1st July 2022, enter um, balance boot down. And the balance boot down there will be um, a balance of 630, the same as the balance carried down. Lastly, the account of Kinodia. Kinodia is a creditor and therefore should be having a balance carried down and balance boot down. So in the account of Kinodia, we're going to have 
a balance carried down on 30th June of 810, 810, which is the difference between the two sides. So we enter the total of 810 on both sides and then enter a balance brought down, enter balance brought down on 1st July 2022. On the opposite side, that will be 810 also. Now with that, we have balance of all the accounts. And after balancing off all the accounts, the next thing we need to do is to prepare a trial balance. We are preparing a trial balance. To prepare a trial balance, we need to uh, understand what a trial balance is, and we need to understand how to prepare the trial balance as follows. A trial balance is a, a list of accounts whereby each account and its balance should appear in the trial balance. And when they are transferred in the trial balance, then accounts with debit balances are listed on the debit column of the trial balance, and accounts with the credit balances are listed on the credit column of the trial balance. To understand this, that uh, an account has a, a debit balance if the debit side is greater than the credit side. So when we say an account has a debit balance, What it simply means is that the total for the debit side, debit totals um, are greater, greater than credit totals. And the vice versa is true, that if we are talking about um, a credit balance, an account with a credit balance, is an account whereby the totals for the credit credit totals are greater than the debit totals. So if in an account, the debit side was greater than the credit side, then that is a an account with a debit balance. And if in the account, the credit side was greater than the debit side, that account has um, debit, a credit balance. A trial balance has two columns as follows. So we have a column for credit and a column for debit. We have a column for debit and a column for credit. Then this column, we have particulars of the accounts or the details of the account or account names. So this is the trial balance. To so find that um, uh, the accounts which have debit balances are entered on debit column and the accounts which have credit balances are entered on the credit column. It does not matter whether an account had a, a balance carried down or a balance put down, or simply the account was transferred to the statement of profit or loss. All of the accounts, all the balances or all the accounts need to be transferred to trial balance. As long as there's a difference between the debit side and credit side. Now, at the end of um, the trial balance, we need to determine the total for each column and they should be equal. The total for debit column here should be equal to the total for the credit column. If this happens, then we assume that the accounts all have been prepared correctly. But in case the total for the debit side is not the same as the total for credit side, then it means some errors may have been committed in the accounts and which need to be investigated to determine where the error occurred. So therefore, 
A tau balance is used to prove mathematical equality of all the debit and credit, and also the balances that they are produced. It helps also to show the errors which may have occurred in generalization and sometimes in posting the accounts into relevant ledger accounts. Let us therefore prepare the trial balance for this particular example, which will show us um, whether we have done the, the entries correctly, whether we have done the calculations correctly, mathematically, as follows. I'm trying to utilize the same space here so that I don't have to scroll so much when I'm looking for the balances for my accounts because that also can confuse um, the learners who are following me. Allow me then to illustrate this. The tile balance looks like this, and there is a debit a column and a credit column. So we have a debit column and we have a credit column. Right here is the debit column, and this is the credit column. So all the accounts with debit balances will be entered in debit column and the accounts with credit balances will be entered on the credit column. Remember we said a debit balance simply means the debit side was greater than the credit side and that's not necessarily means that it has a balance carried down or balance put down. Let us begin with the um, capital account and in the capital account, the, the credit side was greater than the debit side. Therefore we enter here capital and capital equals to um, 11,000 on the credit side, followed by bank. And in the bank account, debit side was greater than credit side by 2,670. So we enter that on the debit side. In cash account also, the debit side was greater than the credit side by 4,190. So we enter that on the, credit, on the debit side 4,190. The next account is the account of purchases. The debit side was greater. So we have purchases. And the debit side of the purchases account was greater than greater by 4,560. So we enter that again on the debit side of the account of the tile balance. The next one is the account of do. And in the account of do, um, there was no difference. The debit side was the same as the credit side. And if the two sides are the same, there's no difference. The difference is what we need to transfer to the trial balance. In case there's no difference, we don't transfer that account to the trial balance. So this account is a special one because there's nothing that will be transferred to the trial balance. We don't have anything to transfer. The debit side is the same as the credit side. The next account is for Esmuigai, where the credit side was greater than the debit side by 1,230. So we have Esmuigai. The credit side is greater, 1,230. The next account is for return outwards. In the account for return outwards, the credit side was greater by 210. So record here return outwards. On the credit side, 210. Followed by an account for sales. And in the sales account here, the credit side was greater than the debit side by 2,460. So record that in the trial in the trial balance as sales on the credit side, 2,460. That is followed by uh, K Mwaniki's account. In the account for K Mwaniki, the debit side was greater than the credit side. Therefore, enter that on the debit side. The amount is 750, 750. 
Now we enter game one, Iki. Which is 750 on the debit side. Came when Iki's account is followed by um, return inwards account. And the return inwards account here um, has um, 450 greater on the debit side than the credit side. So we record um, return inwards account on the debit side. The amount is 450 on the debit side. That is followed by the account of machinery here, whereby the account of machinery being a debit, I um, mean, uh, an account for um, asset, the debit side is greater. by 2,460. The next one is account for MOTN. The account for MOTN debit side is greater by 630. Finally, the account for Kenudia, where the credit side is greater than the debit side by 810. Now, having recorded all or transferred all the accounts in the trial balance, we need to determine the total for the credit side and the total for the debit side to determine the side whether the two sides have the same totals. Now, the sum for the two sides equal to one thousand of equal to fifteen thousand seven hundred and ten. 15,710. They are therefore equal. And that is um, the end of the illustration for preparation of um, ledger accounts and preparation of the trial balance. What you need to note is um, how to balance off the accounts uh, based on the illustration that I gave down here, the explanation that I gave down here that these accounts are balanced in two bits. The first bit consists of assets, liabilities, and capital. And the other one consists of incomes, expenses, return inwards, and return outwards. Then uh, coming to the child balance, the child balance has two columns, and those two columns must have the same total because child balance is used to determine mathematical equality of all the debits and credits. 